Today, I am going to make 30 minute meals and I'm making seven of them so you have something every single day of the week. Now, before we jump into anything, I have a question for you. What does family dinner look like at your house? I know that everyone's probably looks a little bit different. Is it like just you by yourself? Is it you with tons of kids? Now for me, I'm usually sitting by myself in peace and quiet, enjoying my dinner. Just kidding, that's not real. I don't know if that's ever happened before, but I try and have our own little family dinner with just the people that are there at the house. As sisters, we thought it would be fun to maybe do something with you guys. So we're gonna do a little challenge. It's called our five day meal planning challenge. Now, the goal of this challenge is to plan out five meals out of the week, I know that sounds like a lot, and to eat together as a family, whatever your family consists of, for five days. Now we're not gonna leave you hanging. We're gonna give you all the tools you need to complete this challenge. The first thing you're gonna get is our themed night ebook dinners. That's the mouthful. And we give you a few different recipes with each theme. It's, it is fun, trust me on this. Next we're gonna give you an easy meal planning organization sheet. All you have to do is print it off. It will make organizing your meals and planning your meals a lot easier. Next, you'll get a 14 day meal plan and recipe ebook just to give you some good ideas for dinner. And the last thing you'll get is five workshops with one of the sisters. We'll be going live with you on Facebook every single day just to see how you're doing and to just cook with you. So the challenge starts tomorrow, January 24th. So make sure you register. I'll put a link down below for you so you can find it there. Now to be a part of this challenge, it only costs you $5. Now, usually when I join a challenge, I don't really succeed at it unless I have a little skin in the game. So that's why it's only $5, but you get all that fun stuff to go along with it. We really want to make this just a fun opportunity and maybe hopefully get some good habits in place so you'll start planning your recipes and eating together as a family. Okay, so for this video, I'm actually gonna use some of the themed recipes found in the ebook. So if you guys are ready, we have seven recipes, seven themes. I'm so excited. Okay, our first theme is is Meatless Monday, and today I'm making our veggie pasta salad. We're first gonna start by chopping up all the vegetables. So I want to do little bite-sized pieces here because no one likes big chunks of zucchini in one bite, let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, we have one zucchini all chopped up. Now, we're supposed to also have a yellow squash, but you guys, they're all gone at the store, so you can always get two zucchini, or I'm just gonna just skip that step. Next up is the red pepper. Now, my secret with the red pepper is to cut down the sides. If you don't do this, you should. My mom always used to try and cut out the pit and we'd get seeds everywhere, but if you do it this way, no seeds. And then, like the zucchini, we just want small little pieces here because you don't want big chunks of red pepper bites. Next up is the asparagus. Now, this is a lot of asparagus. I love asparagus, so I'm gonna actually chop it all up. Now, I rinsed all of this, but I left the rubber bands on because it helps me kind of keep it all together. So, I'm a fan, fan of the rubber bands. There we go. So I am gonna take it off in this step. Then we just kind of want to cut it into bite-sized pieces. Sorry, if you can hear Sarah in the background. She's just playing Barbies up there. <laughs> All right, that is a lot of asparagus and I am excited. Okay, we're gonna set this to the side. We're gonna pull out another one, just to make my life easier. If you haven't seen this yet, if you've missed it, I always like to get two or three paper towels and just soak them wet. Like you can see how wet it is. It's wet. Then I'm gonna put it between me and the onion so I won't have watery eyes. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, you just gotta try it. Now's the time, chop up your onion. I'm actually only gonna use half an onion here because it is pretty strong, but you do you. You can do large chunks, you can do little chunks. I'm just gonna do some little chunks today. All right, now we have a cookie sheet. I lined it with foil to make our lives a lot easier. We're gonna dump in our onions, just kind of all over the place, and also the rest of the vegetables. Okay, I'm just gonna mix these around a little bit just so you get a mixture of onion and all the other vegetables. And then we'll spread them out the best that we can. Now we're not gonna add olive oil or anything, we're just gonna actually season it with some salt. So put on some salt here. You're also gonna put a little bit of pepper on too. Okay, then we're gonna take this 
Bake it for 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Okay, while that's baking, we're gonna cook up the rotoni. Now, you can follow the instructions, cook it on your stove top, but I'm gonna cook it in the Instant Pot. I'm actually gonna cook the whole one pound of rotoni, just dump it into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now, the secret is to have, pour in as much water until every noodle is covered. I'm gonna need a little bit more. There's a few noodles that aren't covered. One sec. Just gonna add a little bit more in there. There we go. We just want all the noodles to be covered because if they're not covered, then they'll get crunchy. All right, go ahead and put the lid on. This Instant Pot has a little knob, so we're gonna make sure that is on sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna go to pressure cook, and pasta only takes four minutes to cook, so we're gonna set the timer and we can just walk away. So when the timer's done, you can go ahead and release all the pressure out. Um, sometimes it, oh, what's the word? It explodes a little bit. Um, so if that's the case, you can just let it calm down and slowly, slowly kind of let it out. But all the pressure's out of here now, so we're gonna open it up. Now, if you just fill it right above the noodles, you actually won't need to drain any water. It will take all of the water to cook the noodles. So we're just gonna dump this right into our bowl. Okay, now we're gonna take the vegetables and yes, I am a lazy cook. So I'm gonna just take them with the foil and just kind of just dump them in. Let's just simplify our lives here. So the recipe originally calls for balsamic vinaigrette, but my kids don't really like that. So you, we're gonna make it with Italian today. You could do either one, it's fine. Okay, we're just going to pour in about half the bottle right now and then mix it around. All right, and that is all it takes. It really takes about 20 minutes from start to finish. Okay, meet with Monday. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you're my pasta loving, vegetable loving child. Ready? Now, usually you'd serve this cold. It's still a little warm. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a little different, huh? I'll give it a three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. Now, I would probably change it up a little bit, maybe add some Parmesan cheese. Yes. I know it's Meatless Monday, but I'd probably add some chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so all, all the same. I'll give it a three and a half, because mm -hmm. I'm missing my chicken. Now, of course, Tuesday is Taco Tuesday, and I'm gonna be making our chicken taco roll-ups. Now I chose this one because of how easy it is. So you need about three cups of chicken. I like to buy this pre-shredded cooked chicken. It makes my life a lot easier. To the chicken, we're gonna add about eight ounces of softened cream cheese. Also your favorite salsa, about a third of a cup. This is Herdez salsa. I love Herdez. Next we have about one cup of Mexican shredded cheese. Some of you might know that I like to eyeball things. That's close to a cup. And I forgot to chop up my onions, so you need about four green onions. This is like six, but I love green onions, so we're just going to cut up a few and throw it in there also. Now you can just mix it all together. Also appreciate the view of belly. Yes, it's giant. <laughs> right now, two weeks, guys, two weeks. Okay, once it's all mixed pretty good together, we're gonna add a little bit more stuff. So we're gonna add about a teaspoon of garlic. I do use minced garlic out of the jar. I know some people are very offended by that, so I apologize if I offend you. And then we have garlic salt, another teaspoon of this. Then we have two tablespoons of your favorite taco seasoning, or pretty much any taco seasoning. We're just gonna eyeball this, because I know pretty well what two tablespoons is. And then you can also add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. So then we're done. We're gonna mix it all together. Real quick, if you go to the link in the description, you'll notice that this also calls for avocados. Now, the avocados at my store were really firm or really rotted, so I apologize. I'm not gonna show you how to do avocados today. Now for the fun part. So we're gonna take about four tortillas. So we'll split this mixture into about four different yeah, for even, as close as even as you can get. And we're gonna put it right into the middle and spread it all around. Now these tortillas are kind of small. I would suggest using a little bit bigger tortilla, but it'll work for now. Now we're gonna take this little guy and just roll him up. Hence the name, chicken roll-ups. 
Now, you do not have to do this part, but my kids love eating them with toothpicks. So about every inch or so, you're gonna put a toothpick. If you choose not to do toothpicks, you're gonna cut it about every inch or so. Wow, my inches are small. <laughs> That's okay. It just makes it stay together a little bit easier too, especially if you're serving them for something. All right, good enough. Let's cut these babies. So I like to kind of cut off the edge because no one likes just plain tortilla, right? So cut off the edge here and then try and cut evenly into the middle. These are little, little roll-ups. They're so cute. Now you can serve them like this with the toothpicks or you can serve them laying flat. Now there's no wrong or right way. They're both delicious. Okay, chicken roll up. You ready for the taste test? What do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. So you, it's kind of in the middle, maybe like a three. A two. Thank you, all right, good choice. For Wednesday, it's called our Dump and Go Wednesday, which you guys know I love Dump and Go. I'm gonna be making our sweet and tangy meatballs. Now you might have seen this one before, but it is one of my family's favorite. So we're making it as our Dump and Go. We're gonna start with 32 ounces of meatballs. We have 12 ounces of chili sauce, and you're just gonna pour in the whole thing. Or shake it in, you know, whatever works. Save this, you're gonna use this in a second. Then I used to add a whole container of grape jelly, but really you just need about 12 to 15 ounces. So about the same amount of chili sauce that you're using, you'll be using the grape jelly. Now because this is the Instant Pot, we need a little bit of liquid. If you're putting this in the slow cooker, you can just cook it like this. But the Instant Pot, I like to use my chili sauce container, fill it of about a half a cup of water, and dump it in. Okay, go ahead and put your lid on. If you have a little knob that needs to be to sealing, make sure you do that. You're gonna put pressure cook, and this only cooks for seven minutes. So once you set to seven, you can just walk away. All right, once it's all done cooking, you can go ahead and release all the pressure so you either have a little knob or a button. Oh, all the pressure's out. <laughs> it's been sitting here a bit. Then we're gonna open it up, and we're just gonna mix it all around. All right, may these sweet and tangy meatballs. It's kind of a big bite, huh? It's hot. Is it hot? <laughs> All right, how do you rate this one? It was really good out. It, it, it was really hot though. Yeah. <laughs> out of like four. A four? Mm -hmm. it was it because it was too hot, that's why it's a four? Yeah, it was really hot. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thursday is our 30 minute Thursday and it's our one pot cheesy chicken Alfredo. Okay, because this is our one pot meal, we're going to put everything into the pot. So we're gonna start by adding a little bit of olive oil. Now, if you want to make this a lot easier, I love to buy this already grilled chicken. It makes my life so much easier. If not, you can get um, chicken breasts and just cut them up into little bite sized pieces but we're just gonna cook about, I don't know, two cups of diced chicken. Okay, to our chicken, especially if you have raw chicken, um, you wanna add a little bit of seasoning. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper and then half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Then you're just gonna cook this until the chicken is a little bit brown. So about three minutes or so. Or if you're using the chicken like I am, we're gonna cook it until it's heated through. Okay, after about three minutes, we're gonna add a teaspoon, or two teaspoons, excuse me, of garlic, and then we're gonna cook this for about a minute. All right, chicken is looking good. Now we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth into this. Next, we're gonna make this creamy pasta, right? So we're gonna add one and a half cups of whipping cream. And then about a fourth teaspoon of basil, we'll just put in there. Okay, mix this around. Then we're gonna add two cups of penne pasta. We're gonna let it boil until it, I guess, like simmers, right? Then we're gonna turn it down a little bit. We're gonna put the lid on and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Okay, here is our Alfredo. I've been stirring it like every few minutes or so just to make sure all the noodles are covered and can be cooked through, so it looks good. Okay, we're gonna add some cheese. So we have two cups of Parmesan and then three-fourths cup of mozzarella. Okay, then you're gonna carefully, carefully mix this together. <laughs> this is a large skillet, so make sure when you're cooking this you have a big skillet. Now the nice thing about this is if you want to freeze some of this after you're done cooking it, you could totally do that. All right, if you like cheese, you might just love this one. Okay. 
Alfredo. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's try a bite. Stab it, girl, stab it. I liked it. What, yeah. do you th what is your rating? Three. Three? Mm -hmm. Three out of five? Okay. I, I don't like too much, too much cheese. Not too much cheese? Yeah. Not to self, too much cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like noodles very much, so I'm gonna give it a four, but I would eat that for dinner. Yeah. Definitely. Friday is you know, pizza day. And I'm gonna be making our homemade pizza pockets. Okay, for the pizza roll-ups, we're gonna start with some frozen dinner rolls. Now, here is my secret. Lots of times, I don't think about dinner until like five o'clock, and these are still frozen, so I'm gonna show you my trick. So, you're gonna put as many as you want on a plate. Now, this recipe is great because it can feed one person, it could feed 20 people, it just really depends on what you need. So we're gonna just make about, I don't know, 12 or so today, just to show you. I'm gonna put them on a plate. So now I'm gonna microwave them for one to two minutes. So I'm gonna do a minute first, see how they are, and then do another minute if they're still frozen. So I cook these for a minute. They are nice and soft. That's exactly how we want them. So this is my favorite part. So you're gonna stretch out the roll and then, ooh, try not to get holes. <laughs> There we go. I always like put it on so it will stretch a little better. And we're gonna add just one spoonful of pizza sauce, a little bit of cheese. I like to use mozzarella cheese, but you can use your favorite if you want. And then you can put any of your favorite pizza toppings. My kids love pepperoni, so we're just gonna do two little pepperonis. Then my trick is to grab two corners, put them together, grab another corner, grab another corner, and then kind of just pinch the top. We're just gonna cook this for 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna do it 15 first just so it won't burn. Don't be afraid of this. They kind of exploded a little bit, but this is what happens every time and they're still, they're still delicious. All right, Sarah's gonna taste test the pizzas. You ready? Oh, you don't want the pepperonis? Yeah. All right, admit pepperonis. Now try it. All right, what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs up, so that means five? Five, oh, 10, 10, perfect, you love it? Yeah. We're calling Saturday our Simple Saturday and we're making tomato tortellini soup. All right, we're gonna start this one by cooking our tortellini first. So you just follow the instructions on the packet. So we, this one, we need to boil the water first. We're gonna cook them for about three minutes. All right, while the tortellini is cooking, we're gonna make the base of the soup. So we want a big stock pot. We're gonna pour in two cans of tomato soup. Then we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. Okay, two cups of milk. I'm just using skim milk here, but you can use your favorite. And then just two cups of half and half. Now we need some seasoning. So we have one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic salt. And now these are sun-dried tomatoes. We want about a half a cup. Now I drained a little bit of the oil because I don't like the oil, but I do love sun-dried tomatoes. Let's do about half this container here. And then we have about a half teaspoon of salt. All right, then we're just gonna mix this all together and just let it simmer on low. Our tortellini should be done. Okay, tortellini is done. I want to show you my little thing. I think these are like, I don't know. 12, 15 bucks on Amazon. My favorite thing in my kitchen is probably this. I'll, if I remember, I'll try and link it down below for you. Then we just need to drain it. Okay, it's all drained. Then we're just gonna pour it right in. And the last thing is we just want a half cup of Parmesan cheese. Really, we need cheese in all things. It just makes it better. All right, and that's it. That's all you have to do. So simple, so easy, so good. <laughs> okay, tortellini soup. Ready? Is it kind of hot? Sorry. What do you think, Sarah? One, two, three, four, or five. Ooh, double thumbs down? I gave it a zero. A zero? A zero. There we have it. This is actually one of my favorite soups, so I'm gonna rate it five. So average, we're gonna say three, because I love this soup. <laughs> And Sunday is our classic Sunday dinner. I'm gonna be making the perfect pot roast. The recipe calls for slow cooker, but you guys know, I'm gonna be using the Instant Pot. So 
So he's gonna start with the chuck roast in the Instant Pot, but as I dumped, I had a little accident. Dang it, ugh, so disgusting. Okay, this is a huge chuck roast, and usually, I mean, the recipe calls for the to sear on both sides, but to be honest, it's so big, and you really, you don't need to when you're cooking in the Instant Pot. So we're just gonna put all the ingredients in right now. So we're gonna start with some of the spices. So we're gonna put about one teaspoon of salt, just put it all over this little chuck roast. Then I have about half a teaspoon of black pepper, again, just all over, and you can do both sides, but this thing was so big, we're just gonna let it, <laughs> let it be. We're also just gonna add a little bit of garlic salt in here too. All right, smelling good. On top of that is an onion. Now you can roughly chop an onion. My kids don't like roughly chopped, so we are just going to do very, very chopped onion, so they won't really know it's there. Next we have about one pound of baby carrots. I'm just gonna kinda put them to the sides here. And then three celery stalks, just, I just chopped them up into like bite-sized pieces. Now one thing I love about the Instant Pot, like I said before, all the flavors kind of blend together. So we need about three cloves of garlic. So we're just doing a little bit of garlic here. And I do love to use canned garlic because I hate crushing it. I'm just lazy, I know. Then on the sides here, because we don't want to get rid of all the seasonings on the meat, we're gonna do about two cups of beef broth. And that will be enough liquid to help it pressurize. Okay, next we're gonna add three tablespoons of the W sauce. Then we have two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, and then just one tablespoon of soy sauce. So lots of different flavors going on here, but all together, it's gonna taste so good. Then to top it all off, we have about one teaspoon of dried thyme, we're just gonna sprinkle around, and one teaspoon of dried rosemary. We're gonna put that on the top, and then we are ready to cook. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and put your Instant Pot lid on. If you have a little knob that says sealing or venting, make sure that's on sealing. So from here, we're gonna push pressure cook. And because this roast is ginormous, I'm actually gonna cook it for about 90 minutes. Now my secret, put it in in the morning, let it cook for an hour to an hour and a half, and then it will click on keep warm. Just leave it on keep warm for the whole rest of the day, and I'm telling you, that's how you get delicious roasts. Okay, the roast has been sitting here for a while. Oh my goodness. It's in there somewhere. Oh yeah, I can see it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull this little guy out. Don't know if he's gonna come. He might fall apart. Here we go. One, two, three. Woo! That is a giant roast. Okay, roast is done, nice and tender. Vegetables are done. Now we just gotta cut into this thing. Okay, Ansley's here with the roast. Are you ready? Yes. I got a bite for you. <laughs> good? Yeah. That's a good roast. That's really good. Right? Okay, here's the other good thing. You can take like the drippings and then make a really good gravy and make some mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> Chewy wanted to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is your what is your rating here? Five out of five. Five out of five. Yes. Now in case you didn't know, I'm actually having a baby in like two weeks. Yup. Two weeks. So my sisters are gonna be taking over the YouTube for about a month or so. So you'll be seeing them. Make sure you watch their videos. Tell them hi. They're so sweet to be doing that for me. Alright, if you guys want more easy recipes, you know that's my jam. You can find more right up there. Okay, I'll see you guys next time, bye.